After dozens of configurations, I think I finally nailed the best P320 competition setup. This is gonna be an in-depth overview of this P320. So if you guys wanna skip around, there are gonna be chapters on the specifics of the build, but jumping right in top to bottom, we have the Leopold Delta Point Pro. It's not a bad optic, rather expensive for what it is in my opinion. This optic has a lot of rounds on it. I've replaced the battery once in four years, give or take, and it's held up really well. The glass is really large. I've really come to enjoy optics that have the circle ring and a dot rather than just a single dot from the Delta Point Pro on here. So moving forward, we might change this out, but we've had zero reliable issues with this dot the glass does get pretty beat up with unburnt powder and carbon from the loaded chamber indicator on the 320 which is incredibly annoying it's probably something you're going to face with any optic you have on here moving our way down i actually bought this gun starting out as a x compact p320 which i recommend doing you'll end up throwing away some of the parts ultimately you'll get the slide and fcu which are the more expensive parts and if you're building out a competition setup you're going to throw away the frames anyway and probably the 15 round mags because they won't be enough capacity for a competition setup so it is a little bit Bit wasteful but to me the math seems you either go full custom and throw on a custom slide and buy an fcu from sig or you scavenge a 320 build like we did here what's nice about that is we have a lot of 320s at harrington arms so we just kind of use the parts interchangeably nothing went to waste. But if you're a consumer, it might be a little bit wasteful to do this method. If I were you, I would price out all the options. There's a lot of websites selling all of the components, so you can really find a lot of deals on all of these parts, and especially with the slides. There's a lot of companies offering aftermarket slides for these, but with the FCU, you're just kind of paying SIGS premium on that. There's no way around it. With this, we did opt for a SIG Sauer 4.3 inch threaded barrel to run the Harrington Arms HC320 flat on here. This comp does a really nice job with two kinds of recoil, which we'll get into later. No issues with this barrel. We've had this barrel for many years it was actually the first barrel used to make the prototype and really dial in the hc320 lineup so it's got a lot of rounds on it i've had no issues with accuracy or reliability out of it i will say with sig barrels there is a lengthy break-in period we found they typically take three to five hundred rounds of break in potentially without a compensator we've even seen issues with break-in with a compensator that only gets amplified we run a lot of true precision barrels that run pretty much right out the gate don't have much of a break-in period but i really do like the robustness of a sig barrel i think they did a really good job so if you're looking for a barrel honestly true precision or oem sig are great options like i mentioned we're running the hc320 flat on here so we get a nice flush look with the end of the frame on here it looks really clean it kind of resembles a staccato xc where you have that integrated comp. While looks may not matter for a competition setup, I think this looks really good and it performs even better. We also tried a HC320 XL on there to see which would have the best recoil pattern for competition. In my opinion, the 320 flat did it for me. With the side port shooting gases out both sides, it reduced the linear recoil in the hand feel. So it softened the blow of a nine millimeter cartridge and the top port reduced that muzzle flip or vertical recoil. This comp does a nice job reducing two different kinds of recoil rather than the 320XL that were simply reduced all muzzle flip. There were no side ports on there. When you throw a compensator that has three ports or side ports and a top port on this big heavy setup, it shoots really flat in the hand. It's very comfortable to shoot. I can shoot really fast because the recoil is just deadened. And let's be honest, if you're building a competition setup, you're gonna care a lot about recoil. Recoil doesn't help you in any situation. It's not a helpful thing to shoot fast or shoot more efficiently. So reducing all that recoil or as much as you can is gonna help a lot with a competition setup. Moving our way down from the slide to the frame, we have the Icarus SOCOM frame on here. This does a really nice job of adding a lot of weight to the build, which ultimately is gonna produce more recoil. The more weight you have, the more recoil you're gonna have with a handgun. There's a lot of features on this frame, so we're gonna get into all that before we dive into the rest of the components. They have this really nice beaver tail on the back that sweeps up. I kind of have mixed feelings about this. I think it does a really nice job acting as a leverage point when the muzzle flip goes up. You can see this beaver tail is going to rock into my hand and stop the gun from rotating up. Honestly, I prefer the OEM SIG. It just feels like it comes out a little bit further, a little bit wider. And while I think the OEM SIG one is a little bit better, this one still does a really nice job. Also gives it kind of an interesting look. I don't know what the science was to make this sweep up. To me, theoretically, if you had it come straight back as far as you can, it would do a little bit better job of activating that beaver tail. I think they did a really nice job with the ergonomics and the grip texture on here. It's rather aggressive, but it's not too sharp. Sometimes I've seen in some of the other frames on the market that just have way too aggressive of a grip texture. Sure. It's borderline uncomfortable to shoot. This is actually really comfortable. It plants really nicely in the hand. One thing that I will note is there's not many hot spots on this frame. It kind of morphs to my hand perfectly. The undercut is really aggressive. There's no hot spots on my knuckle. Same with the beaver tail. It's all chopped away. There's no hot spots 
on this side. I think they did a really nice job with the ergonomics of it. They opted to keep this relatively flat on the back, which I can appreciate. Some of the Icarus frames really bubble up in the back, and I understand what they're going for with that. For me, though, I really enjoy the flatter back plate. It just feels more comfortable in my hand when I'm shooting. It doesn't feel like another pressure point in my hand. One thing to note, though, is this grip is relatively large. I would say it is the same size as an OEM large frame from Sig Sauer. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I prefer the small grip module, so it feels a little bit on the bigger side for me, but it's definitely not hindering my shooting speed. I wish it was a little bit smaller, but I understand why they went down this direction. With this being a competition style frame, a lot of people run 2011s or bigger framed handguns, so they're definitely marketing it towards that niche. So I totally get it. For me though, I wish it was a little bit smaller. Another point of complaint is actually this little cut here. One thing I did note is my support hand would get closer to the frame and it sat right on this slide lock slide release. And I had quite a few times where it would just lock back when shooting because my support thumb was pushing up on it. If you take a look at the Icarus versus the OEM, you can see this ledge right here is what I was referencing. Kind of pushes your support hand away from the slide release. I'm not sure why they opted to do this. It does give it a very easy path for your thumb to hit the mag release. So maybe that is their intention, but honestly it was a little more hindering than it was beneficial. I didn't notice the slide getting locked back in previous events, but when we went out to the range today, I just had it happening frequently enough that it was rather annoying. And if I was in a competition, I would definitely be frustrated because you take a second to see what's going on and all that's doing is adding time to your run. Moving our way down to the bottom of the frame, we have the Stormtrooper helmet, as a lot of people have made jokes about. I think it definitely does look like that, but honestly, it's a very effective magwell. While I don't care for the aesthetic, I think they kind of nailed it on what they were going for, which is a very aggressive competition magwell. The funnel being on the bottom portion makes a lot of sense. For me, when I do reloads, I index my finger all the way to the tip if I can, and it just feels very natural to do a reload on here. For me, you'll see the bottom is kind of nicked up where the back of the round will hit right here in the bottom part of the funnel. So it just makes it very easy to do a reload. Another thing that's really nice too is the way they cut this, you can use a lot of the OEM SIG magazines, which brings me to a little tangent. One thing we took into consideration when designing this mag extension was the SOCOM. We found that some of the mag extensions on the market would not fit this. So we added these two deep cuts in the side here to allow for the bottom of the Stormtrooper hat magwell to fit. And it works really well. I'm glad that was something we took into consideration when designing this because we see a lot of our mag extensions in use for competition and a lot of people are choosing this frame. And while I have a lot to say bad about the frame, I'm really nitpicking this frame apart as I would in any video in any frame. I wanna look at all the pros and cons and there's a lot of pros of this frame. It's very ergonomic, it's very comfortable, it's very heavy, but there are a couple things that I wish I would have done differently. And honestly, I'm sure they're already implementing in other versions of their full-size frames. That is one thing I did forget to mention. This is a P320 full-size frame. So you can see it comes all the way out to the end. If you ran a full-size slide on here without a compensator, it would be flush with the end. And what this is doing is if you wanted to do competition, you probably would have ran a full-size frame. Well, now you can throw a compensator on there, remove some of the frame and reduce a lot more felt recoil than you would with a full-size frame. With this being said, you can use this entire setup with almost any X full holster. Here we have a T-Rex arms holster. And this works great with this rig. When I take off the Align Tactical Thumb Rest, which we'll get to in a minute, one thing that's really nice about this T-Rex holster is I can take my OEM SIG frame with a TLR1 on it, or I can take this Icarus frame and it will work just fine. Some holsters on the market won't work with aluminum frames. It's been a common trend with the P320 and the 365. A lot of the aluminum frames won't fit Kydex holsters for OEM frames which to me is just frustrating. To go find a custom holster maker simply because the frame won't work is really frustrating. It's one of my complaints with the Align Tactical thumb rest. I know Joel over at Align Tactical is working with a lot of holster manufacturers to get them to implement clearance for the thumb rest. So while we're talking about it, let's go ahead and talk about this thumb rest. I think it's a really good version of a thumb rest. It has this single plane shelf that fits perfectly for your support hand. It's very comfortable to shoot and works really good to reduce recoil. The ability to put more downward pressure on the muzzle is going to reduce that recoil. While I can't typically run this in my current configuration for competition, I had to throw it in here because it's something I would add and I'm going to add in the future as soon as I get the proper holster. It's definitely annoying that a lot of the mainstream holsters like T-Rex Arms and Tier 1 Concealed 
don't make clearance for these thumb rests yet, but there's quite a few holster manufacturers that do. In the meantime, we're gonna be running their stuff. I think if you're building an ultimate build, you really can't deny the benefits of a thumb rest and just how important they are. Talking about Lion Tactical, we do have their extended offset mag release in here. This is really nice because it makes clearance for your middle finger. If you were to hold a regular frame, the mag release for the 320 is basically sitting on your middle finger. And that's just kind of annoying. It's another pressure point. Where I think this mag release really shines is the location. When I index and go to do a reload, it is in the perfect place sitting up a little bit higher than OEM, and it is rather extended, sticking off the frame. So for fast reloads, the less time you spend fumbling or having to push further with a mag release, it's just gonna save fractions of a second on a reload, which in competition is incredibly important. The faster you are, the better you're gonna do. I think it's just one of those things that is just a very easy and cheap fix to throw in there. So of course we threw it in this build. Talking about the trigger on here, this is just the black Custom Works P320 FCU. So it has an OEM SIG trigger in here, which is honestly really nice. This is probably one of the new standards I have for triggers. There's definitely some things I don't like about it, but honestly, there's just so many things that are awesome. The length of pull is very comfortable for me. My finger sits pretty much perfectly on the trigger in its resting position. And then once it breaks, it is a very short throw. So it is still in a very comfortable position. That along with the heavy frame and the compensator, I can shoot this gun really quick. But with this trigger, it's a very light trigger pull. I don't actually know what the weight is. I'm going to say it's probably around four or five pound range. And then the reset is rather short and very tactile, very audible. You know, Glock triggers have been the industry standard for a while. One thing I don't like about the Glock trigger is the length of pull when the trigger is depressed and the amount of travel in the trigger and the finger dongle safety in the trigger. I just prefer this trigger a lot more. It very much resembles a 1911 or 2011 style trigger to me. Both the flat face, the angle at which the trigger breaks and the very short throw, the rather light trigger pull from factory. I just have a lot of good things to say about this trigger. Sure, the brake might be a little squishy and it's kind of a rolling brake, but honestly, I feel like most people would shoot this better than a stock Glock. It might take a second to get used to. When I'm looking at a trigger, if I can get one from OEM that's nice, that's just less money I have to spend on a build. And with this already being a rather expensive build, it's nice to just use an OEM part. Last couple of things we have on this build is a Streamlight TLR1. We throw this on pretty much everything. It's not really necessary on a competition build. And adding this light on here, I just felt like it would reduce some of the recoil and help a lot with the overall consistency I have with this gun. Most of the time when I shoot this gun, I can just use my same outside the waistband holster I use for all of my training. So for consistency standpoint, I guess it's nice to have that same feel. The way I grip the gun may be a little unconventional. My fingers kind of sit right here on the bottom of the light. It's very comfortable for me. It's very consistent. So for me, when I draw, I find I can be more consistent if all the things are the same. If I take this light off, my hand kind of wants to ride up the frame here and I just don't have consistent shooting. So for me, it's a weight reduction and a consistency thing. This is gonna be different for everybody. You can pretty much scratch off $200 if you decide not to throw a light on here. But honestly, I'd recommend it. Weight reduces a lot of recoil and while you're not gonna use it in the competition, it's basically just a giant counterweight on there that's gonna help you shoot faster. Last but not least is the mag and magazine. Obviously, I mentioned I bought an X compact slide, which came with 15 round mags. I tossed those and bought 17 round mags from SIG. This is gonna add some additional costs, about $50 per mag. Either way, you're gonna need 17 round mags for this frame. We opted to throw the Harrington Arms plus five mag extension on there. Obviously, one thing we took into consideration when designing this mag extension is the gauge from USPSA. If you're shooting competition, you're probably in open class or something of the like, and there's going to be restrictions on your magazine size. Here we have the 141.25 millimeter gauge. You can see we just fit in this gauge. Kind of depends on who's running the show, whether you're going to have a loaded mag or not. Either way, this mag and extension fit in the 141. 0.25 millimeter gauge. Obviously it's gonna fit in the larger one, not a big deal there. When you're running a very custom gun like this, it's gonna throw you in a very high level class for USPSA or honestly most competitions you're gonna be running. We try to make this mag extension look really good and obviously serve a purpose with the serrations on the front for indexing, fitting in the gauge and working with this frame. We feel like this is a very versatile mag extension. So I threw these two prices in the total cost of the build. So if you were to total up everything on this build as I would have bought it with buying an X compact handgun and swapping out all the parts, you're looking at $2,148, which is a very hefty price tag for a competition gun. For those that run open class or any high level class competition, you're gonna know that's kind of a drop in the bucket for 
really the rabbit hole you can go down with race guns and competition guns. If you're somebody that has a 320 lying around and you really wanna get into competition, but you don't wanna go out and splurge for a very expensive custom 2011 or race gun, I think you can really turn a 320 into a competition machine and perform really well. This is a very high level build with all of the benefits that I can possibly throw into a gun. With that, there comes a cost of $2,000. If you wanted to throw on the polymer OEM frame, maybe remove the weapon light, get rid of the mag extension. All of these things would reduce a lot of cost with this build. You'd probably be right under $1,500 and you would still perform very similar. But when you're trying to take it to the next level of a very serious competition 320, I think all of this stuff really has value and adds value. And if you're not afraid to spend some of the money, I think you're gonna get all of that value out of this build. So if you're not sold on a very expensive competition 320, we've done a lot of configurations with the P320, so if you guys wanna check that out, make sure you check out the channel. Otherwise, I'm really curious, what are your thoughts on this P320? Is this something you're gonna consider for competition? Or maybe drop a comment down below what your competition setup is. If you guys like this video, we'd appreciate a like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.